afternoon, everybody. I'm Enrica Porcari. I'm the head of the IT department here at CERN in Geneva. And I'm going to talk to you about advancing science collaboratively, how it generates technologies that are relevant for all. So let me introduce you to CERN. CERN is the biggest uh, laboratory for particle physics in the world and is, is based at the border between France and Switzerland, uh, right next to Geneva. And our goal is to really understand the most fundamental particles and laws of the, of the universe. We do that through four pillars. One is obviously research, which is one of the core elements of the work that we do. Collaboration, we collaborate with many organizations and countries worldwide, and I'll tell you about this later. Technology and innovations is the centerpiece of our, of our work pushing the boundaries of technology and innovation for everything that we do. And one of the pillars of our work is about extending the work that we do towards education and training um, in, uh, at CERN and beyond. So we develop technology in three key areas for our work. One is the accelerator. The other one is the detectors, the development and the, and the running of the detectors, and then computing, which for which my department is responsible. So this is the Large Hadron Collider, the 27 kilometer uh, tunnel uh, underground, 100 meters underground, which uh, contains super, superconducted magnets that steers, the steers particles around the rings, particles that travel at almost the speed of light. So what happens to these particles as they collide in two different um, uh, uh, beams, clockwise and anti-clockwise, at four specific points, giant detectors record these collisions. So the four detectors are, are the home for large projects, CMS, Atlas, Alice, Atlas, and LHCB, where this information is recorded. So what happens? These detectors are like large 3D cameras. I mean, when I mean large, the diameter of that detector is about 25 meters. So the detectors measure the energy and the direction and the charge of the, new, uh, of the new particles that are formed by the collision. The detectors take about 40 million pictures a second, but many of them are discarded because either we have seen them before or they're, they're uh, not useful at this moment. So only about a thousand of them are recorded and, and stored. So stored where? They come to store in the uh, uh, CERN data center, where they're also further distributed through the WLCG, which is the Worldwide Large Hadron Collider Computing Grid, which includes over 170 data centers in 42 countries. To give you a size, to give you an idea of the size of the data that we collect and, and distribute, we have about a thousand petabytes of CERN data currently available worldwide. So why is this important? So reaching this very ambitious scientific objectives requires that CERN focus uh, and develops a lot of advanced instruments and new technologies to make CERN really a driver of innovation. But this is not only innovation for ourselves. We have a mandate, we, we are mandated by, by our constitution, but also we set up um, uh, important programs within CERN to ease, easily transfer what the, the, our know-how to industry and society. So for example, we have set up nine business incubation centers in member states, and uh, we, in, we assist uh, young entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs, small technology businesses in taking the technologies that CERN develops uh, and our expertise to the market. So CERN also engages widely with international, with international organizations and platforms to share the value of science and, and inform uh, fact-based decision-making uh, within empowered uh, citizens groups. So CERN is an observer at the, uh, the UN General Assembly and actively supports uh, seven uh, of the 17 sustainable UN Sustainable Development Goals. So during my talk, I'll guide you through six of them. The number five, the one on gender equality, 
I will leave it to, uh, to my colleagues who will have a specific session on, on gender issues. So let's go through some of this, uh, this uh, sustainable development goals. So number three, good health and, and well-being. So CERN mission, as I said, is to extend science beyond what we do. So we, so the technology that we have to develop for our own work, we always look for other um, uh, implementations. So look at, and this is not new, as a slide says, it was 46 years ago that CERN, that the PET scans was developed using CERN technologies. So, but many of the technology, we have um, a collaboration called Medipix that really looks at how technologies develop as CERN could be used in the medical sector, both in therapy um, for, uh, for cancer treatment, in imaging uh, and diagnosis, uh, for uh, scanning techniques that are more and more refined, and for bio developing biomedical technologies and uh, um, uh, medical and biomedical uh, research. A, a couple of examples, um, we have a particle, we develop a particle accelerators um, uh, that are used in hadron therapy for the treatment of tumors, uh, already operational here in Switzerland. Um, develop medical uh, imaging using scintill uh, scintillating crystals for PET scanners. Um, and then we have pixel detectors, that what you see here is in Medipix for um, x-rays, and those were used in, uh, in some uh, astronauts' um, uh, missions. So uh, next one, I want to talk to you about um, CARA. So when COVID, uh, the COVID pandemic uh, was in full swing, uh, CERN developed a COVID airborne risk assessment, a system to understand the transmission of respiratory pathogens, in particular for the uh, COVID um, uh, virus. And, um, and we developed it for ourselves because we wanted to make sure that our staff would uh, uh, feel comfortable uh, when there was the re-entry, when they needed to participate in meetings, but also because in some of the work that is done here at CERN cannot be done remotely. We need to have engineers, technicians uh, on the ground. So how did we do it? We developed the systems. Now, the, the World Health Organizations became very interested in it and together with us is extending the model to what is called now Chimera, which is the CERN Airborne Model for Indoors Risk Assessment, which lo looks beyond COVID. So it's, uh, we just use the physical model, the same engine that we had with CARA, looking at uh, uh, the, using different parameters for other circumstances. So one of the examples of technology developed here that then is used for, uh, for other particular, for other uses. SDG4, quality and education. So education, as I said earlier, is really uh, at the core. Uh, of, of our mission. And uh, the inspiring uh, rising generation of new scientists is, uh, uh, is one of our uh, core mandates. Just to give you a few numbers, we have about 70,000 school children that visit CERN every year. Um, 10,000 teachers that have been trained by CERN um, since 2006. Uh, thousands of school students that perform hands-on experiments here at, uh, at the CERN campus on what is called the CERN uh, school lab, um, and then every year we register thousands of uh, of PhD students uh, to do their their research um, uh, and their and their further their education. So education is is, is of particular uh, importance to us. Um, so much so that we take as uh, education efforts outside of CERN. Here is what I wanted to show you: the, the CERN School of Computing, which is what my department does. It's a school that was created, launched in 1970, which this year reaches its 44th edition. And since then, he has, he has trained over 3,000 students of 80 different nationalities um, in 22 countries. So it's a school that travels the, that travels the world and brings education closer to the, to the, uh, to the people. Uh, CERN doesn't only have a school of computing, it has a school of physics, school of accelerator, but you know, I wanted to focus on this because I am definitely more familiar with it. So number seven, affordable and clean uh, energy. What does CERN do to improve the, uh, the energy cleansiness in, uh, in our world? Um, 
so just a couple of examples. Uh, we're developing um, higher po high power transmission um, that uh, lower the, the losses uh, of electricity transmissions and therefore could, it could become an enabling technology for overall a more sustainable transmission of electric uh, energy. So imagine, again, this is work that we will have to do at CERN for our own work to run the accelerator, uh, to run the cryogenics, to run the magnets, uh, to run all the infrastructure that is down in the tunnel that I showed you earlier. This technology, which continues to be improved uh, and innovated, um, we look at it as applications for others. In fact, we just enter a partnership with Airbus uh, on future clean aviation to see how the superconducting technologies that we're using for our accelerator could be used for uh, to, uh, to, 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 jet, to build, uh, to ideate future low emission airplanes. CERN also started a, an innovation program on environmental applications in, two, in March 2002 to really harness all these innovations, potentials in environmental technology. We, uh, we run a fund, uh, you know, a competitive fund to look for further ideas to co-develop with us uh, innovative, uh, innovative solutions. So SDG 9 uh, on industry innovation and infrastructure. So look at the, the picture on the top left, that's Machina. Um, that's a, a device that CERN and INFN, the Italian Institute of Nuclear uh, Physics, uh, have developed. Uh, and it is a compact transportable accelerator for the non-destructive analysis of historical artifacts and artwork. So it's now included in, uh, it's in, the, it's in Florence, I think, and it's doing its work there to analyze the uh, the masterpieces and, and that uh, are held in the museums in uh, in Florence. Now, uh, inside uh, inside art is the inside art is the next one I wanted to talk to you about. Um, is a Czech startup that is built on the on a CERN uh, time picks detector, that is basically uh, is a, is an X ray is an advanced X ray uh, source. That help the, the that helps determine the the genesis of some of the some of the artifacts. Uh, I think most notably, as in this picture shows, uh, is the device that was used to identify that the uh, Madonna and the child was actually uh, created by um, Raphael himself. So um, one last thing, maybe the car the the together with the uh, Zensact, um, a startup in Sweden. Uh, we looked at opportunities to um, increase the to, to, for um, autonomous cars to make uh, faster de uh, faster decisions and hopefully bring in safer autonomous cars uh, to the streets uh, soon. SDG 16 looks at peace, justice, and strong institution. I think a CERN itself that uh, as an organization that is uh, celebrating its 70 years next year. Um, is, an, is an organization that historically brings nations together, uh, building peace through science. Uh, we have over 110 nationalities that work together uh, at CERN, uh, irrespective of their religions and government systems. And some of the countries that uh, work at, with, with CERN are opponents at the political stage. But at CERN find uh, an honest, you know, a, a, a neutral place to be able to just do science. Um, and uh, it's important also to know that according to our convention, all of the work that we do uh, here at CERN is, has to be put in the open and free access uh, to everybody. Um, open science is, uh, uh, is, again, as I said at the beginning, is the center of what we do. Also in the uh, open science, open, uh, uh, open data, um, CERN developed uh, an, open, uh, an open science policy uh, recently, and everything that we do from uh, tools to hardware uh, to data um, is, is supported by this vision of making our work uh, open. So in the IT department, we develop tools that are open and, you, and used to, uh, with the outs, uh, by other organizations. Uh, just an example, Indico. 
um, which is a conference and meetings and, and events uh, scheduler and organizer um, with the data, with the document repository, uh, linking to video conferencing is, is used uh, um, uh, every day by over 10,000 uh, users and manages uh, since its birth 700,000 events. So it's a very successful application of some of the work again that we did here at CERN and then we, we extend to others. Uh, just it, uh, um, as an example, just uh, I, I found this slide from 2019 uh, how many users within the United Nations uh, use, uh, use this uh, technology. Again, in support of open science and open, uh, open research, um, uh, CERN developed uh, Zenodo um, uh, within, with a, an engine underneath called Invenio RDM, which is an open, uh, an open source uh, technology that allows for uh, open document uh, repositories with uh, uh, perennial DOIs, so uh, they can be, uh, um, papers can be found uh, all the time by, uh, by, by everybody. Um, continuing on the partnership for the partnership, as I said, uh, CERN uh, in its 70 years has been a model for open and inclusive collaborations. 23 member states, 10 associate, uh, member, uh, associate member states, observers, 50 cooperation agreements, uh, many staff from different parts of the world. Uh, let's just look at the size of the 70% uh, of the physics research in the world is done here at CERN. And CERN extends is armed by cooperating with many UN organizations to, um, again, amplify our impact uh, on society of the work that we do. As an example, we host here at CERN uh, since two, 2001, UNOSAT, uh, part of UNITAR, the United Nations Institute for Training and Research. As a, UNOSAT is an organization that looks at uh, ways to develop uh, mapping, uh, credible and reliable and timely mapping for um, flood detection, shelters for refugees, and they're used by uh, United Nations and other humanitarian organizations alike. So we use them, we not only host them here in terms of basing it on, on the infrastructure of CERN, but we develop with them a lot of AI, artificial intelligence for satellite imagery uh, analysis. It was only last week that I was in Lebanon uh, inaugurating the high performance computing for Lebanon. Uh, a, a, a project that we launched a number of years ago to reuse some of the uh, technology, some of the equipment that is uh, that is used here at CERN, and then after it finishes uh, um, the timeline, a, you know, a life cycle here, but it's still uh, very usable um, hardware. Uh, what we do instead of uh, uh, throwing it away, we we refurbish it, we clean it up, and we donate it to um, universities or organizations uh, that uh, require, uh, that uh, requested. Uh, last was, uh, um, as I said, is a, um, is a partnership of universities in Lebanon uh, and, and in partnership with public sector organizations in Lebanon. And we were able to, uh, to inaugurate uh, the, the, the data center there at the presence of the prime minister and various ministers really uh, I was personally there and I could see that how this platform would really promote innovation, research and scientific discovery in the country. There was a lot of enthusiasm for, uh, from young people who attend universities and now have facilities to be able to do their work uh, better. So I hope that this short uh, uh, speech was able to give you a few glimpses of how at CERN we strongly believe, not only we believe in theory, what we practice uh, science uh, collaboratively, and we work hard to indeed generate technologies that are relevant for all. Thank you.